Hello, my name's Stuart. I'm the curator of the Cromwell Museum in Huntingdon. Um, it's my pleasure to welcome you here to the museum. Today I'm going to give you a very brief tour of what the museum looks like. You might have seen a video before on our YouTube channel, which was filmed about a year or so ago, just to give you a flavour of the museum. And obviously we've changed quite dramatically since then, as we've had a major refurbishment. Uh, also as well, at the moment, we've got uh, precautions in place with the COVID-19 pandemic. So uh, I'm going to give you a little bit of a tour of the museum, give you a flavour and uh, hopefully make you want to come and visit. So do come on inside. With the current COVID-19 pandemic, we've obviously had to put in place various precautions to safeguard our visitors, but also our volunteers and staff here as well. So we've used the best advice we can get in terms of both the museum sector, but also, of course, uh, the UK government guidance as well. And uh, therefore, we've got uh, socially distanced queuing outside the building. We're allowing only a limited number of people inside at any one time and making sure that they keep two metres social distancing as they go around the museum. We've got a strict route around the museum, sort of arrows laid out on the floor so you can see a way round. Um, we've put in a perspex screen to protect uh, our staff who are on the counter. Um, we're regularly cleaning down the museum throughout the day, all the surfaces that people are likely to touch. We're asking that people, as they come into the museum, use the uh, antibacterial hands gel. Um, and there's also that available around the museum for people to use at various points as well. Um, so we're using kind of all the best practice that we can do in order to, to safeguard everybody um, and hopefully also make sure they still enjoy their visit. If you want to know more about our guidelines and uh, all of our precautions, uh, you can have a look on the museum's website and uh, there's a full list of uh, up-to-date precautions uh, which will be altered obviously as government guidance changes. Um, so you can see that uh, exactly what you need to do and uh, any precautions in place prior to your visit. We're also as well doing uh, group visits on Tuesdays, so we're open to the public currently Wednesday to Saturday, but on Tuesdays we're doing pre-booked slots, so if you don't feel comfortable visiting with the possibility of other people being about, you can actually book one of those slots as well, so again more details of those on our website. So one of the things you'll see as you enter the museum for the first time is this enormous portrait of Cromwell. It's designed to confront you as you kind of come into the building. And it's a remarkable life-size portrait of Cromwell by Robert Walker, probably dating to about 1649. Um, it's actually life-sized, so you can get an impression of the size of the man himself. Uh, you'll notice over my shoulder here there are various words which have also been attached to the case here as well. Uh, various descriptions, both positive and negative, that have been used to describe Cromwell over the centuries. Um, and we recognise the fact that he is an immensely controversial figure. He's one of the most divisive figures in British history. Some people love him, some people hate him. Our job is uh, not to be Cromwell's fan club. We tell his story honestly and accurately, or we try and dismiss some of the, the myths about Cromwell. And no, he didn't cancel Christmas, by the way. We're one of the smallest museums in the country and obviously one of the most specialists. We focus specifically on the life and times of Oliver Cromwell. And uh, the displays here include probably the best collection in the world of items relating to him. Probably around about 20% of our collection is on loan to us from Cromwell's immediate descendants. Uh, some of our objects are on loan to us from other museums, including the Royal Armouries and the Museum of London, and about 70% of the collection uh, actually belongs to the Museum Trust itself. Uh, we have an amazing collection of portraiture, so um, both of Cromwell, his family, and many of his contemporaries, uh, by some of the greatest artists of the mid-17th century, so works by uh, Robert Walker, Samuel Cooper, uh, Peter Lely, and uh, one reputed to be by William Dobson as well. So uh, those are just some of the, the kind of big names of art that we have displayed around the museum. Um, there are many personal items relating to Cromwell, so these uh, amazing items, which, as I say, many of them loaned to us by uh, Cromwell's immediate descendants, uh, including his personal medical chest, um, which is a, a beautiful item which uh, would have been kind of taken with him on campaign or when he travels whilst he was Lord Protector. Um, this amazing Florentine chest, which was uh, given to him as a diplomatic gift in 1656 by the Grand Duke of Tuscany, and uh, would have originally contained uh, small pots of various soaps, some of which we know were actually scented with orange. So you have the lovely image of Oliver Cromwell uh, washing in orange scented soap. Uh, we also have uh, several of his swords in the museum's collection, uh, what's reputed to be his hat. Um, the hat in question is said to be that which he wore when he dismissed Parliament in April 1653. Arms armour, of course, and uh, pamphlets, literature and so forth relating to the period of the civil wars. 
So uh, there's a, a wide variety of material here that kind of covers the, the sort of the story of Cromwell's life, as well as uh, also his legacy and um, the various controversies relating to him into the bargain. Uh, we don't shy away from those. So there are uh, displays here relating to the trial and execution of the king, which some people find very controversial today, and above all his campaigns and uh, involvement in Ireland, which of course is uh, one of the things which for many people has blackened Cromwell's uh, reputation irredeemably. So the Cromwell Museum's building is also of interest to many visitors. Um, you can see behind me here this uh, beautiful Norman arch that's sort of uh, kind of decorating one side of the building here. This is in fact the oldest building in Huntingdon. Parts of it date back to the 1160s and originally it was a much larger building, part of a medieval monastic hospital run by the Augustinian canons. At uh, the Reformation it was cut down to its current size and became the local grammar school. Um, and uh, it was the sort of grammar school from 1565 and indeed remained property of the grammar school right up until the 1950s. Uh, amongst the students who studied here, both were Oliver Cromwell, who of course was born just up the street from here and uh, lived in Huntington over half his life. Uh, Samuel Pepys, the famous diarist, also went to school here and of course subsequently he actually knew and indeed worked for Cromwell in the 1650s. Um, so it's uh, interesting to note that both of these men and various other Cromwellian connections, including Edward Montague, the first Earl of Sandwich, all went to school in this very building. So it's sort of uh, a, a remarkable sort of story in that regard as well. Um, it's been the museum then since 1962 and uh, then obviously recently refurbished. So for those of you who might have seen our earlier tour video, which I say we did about a year or so ago, um, or indeed have visited the museum in the last year or so, uh, you'll see that the museum looks very different to what it did before. Um, we closed September last year and then reopened on the 1st of March after a major refurbishment, uh, the first that the museum's had in over 30 years. Um, this was uh, generously funded by a number of grant or giving organisations, including the uh, Biffer Award, uh, which is administered by the Association of Independent Museums, uh, the Wolfson Foundation and the Huntington Freemans Trust, as well as uh, many public donations into the bargain. So uh, that enabled us to uh, do this amazing uh, refurbishment inside the museum. Um, we've changed about 30% of the objects on display. Overall, we have about 15% more on display than we did before. There's much more to see, and you'll see there's also our displays are much more interactive. We're using uh, audio, visual, and so forth um, sort of displays to, to kind of bring to life uh, this complex but fascinating period of history for our visitors. So do make sure you come and have a look. Hopefully, uh, that uh, little flavour has just uh, whetted your appetite and made you want to come and visit the museum. Um, if you want to know more, please do check out our website, cromwellmuseum.org, uh, also our Facebook and Twitter uh, posts. Um, you can see details of how to find those in the uh, closing card at the end of this video. Um, but uh, hopefully you want to come and have a look around, and we look forward to seeing you soon. Thank you very much.